Today I'm going to show you an easy, delicious way to roast a turkey. I always like to start with these waterproof pads. They are clean and sterile and new. Take them right out of the package. I use them often in the kitchen so that I can just throw everything away at one time and the countertops stay clean. I'm going to use a regular roasting pan and I like to line mine with foil. The foil only makes the pan a little bit easier to clean. We're going to begin with a compound butter, which is room temperature softened butter mixed with different herbs, spices, and seasonings. Here I'm going to use black pepper, paprika, garlic, garlic and pepper, garlic salt, onion powder, and fresh sage from our garden. You can tweak the herbs and spices to your liking. You can add more spice or you can add a smokier flavor. You do want to use room temperature butter, not melted butter. So you do not want to put this in the microwave. You want to let your stick of butter set out until it is soft and squishy. To mix in the spices with the butter, all you need to do is take the butter from the packaging and put it into a medium sized bowl. I like to pour my spices into the lids of the spice containers so I can put them into the bowl in a controlled manner. Not too much goes into the bowl. Simply mix your spices into the room temperature butter until they are all evenly mixed and incorporated. Because of the paprika and the other spices that I put in, mine turns out looking a little bit like peanut butter. Once you get it completely smooth and incorporated, we can set it aside and begin to prepare the turkey. Now that we have our compound butter ready, it's time to open up the turkey. This is a Butterball Premium All Natural Turkey, so it will have the um, neck and different organs inside. We're going to remove those and save them for, you know, a turkey stock. Be sure to save the weight tag that comes on your turkey. You will need it at the end. Information on it will need at the end, right before we put our turkey into the oven. Now that we have the turkey completely open, make sure all the small pieces of plastic get put into the trash can and don't make it into your final dish. There is a secret to this and sometimes we have a little help. What we're going to do now is work the skin up on the turkey. So we're going to dry it just a little bit to make it easier to handle. I am slowly working my hand under the thick skin to loosen it from the bottom of the bird where the legs are all the way up to the top of the bird where the neck was. So we're slowly using a spatula here to separate the skin. Remember the skin is very very thick. Turkeys have a layer of fat, a very thin layer of fat between the meat and the skin. That layer of fat we're going to use to our advantage. Usually it will end up tearing a little bit, but we want to keep that as intact as possible. There are connective layers I'm trying to sweep under. So this extra part of the skin I'm going to remove, and we'll put that with um, the neck and things that we can have later to go into um, gravies and things. Remember the butter has all of the flavor that we're trying to put in the turkey. As it cooks, obviously the butter will melt and those seasonings will stick close to the skin and close to the meat and uh, make for an amazing, amazing crispy skin on the outside and lots of flavor. I like to run my fingers in the bowl and get the rest of those seasonings and a little bit of butter out and rub it on the outside of the turkey. So we have layers and layers of flavor and butter and skin and flavor and butter and skin and it's just a delicious delicious way to make turkey. It's very easy. No basting is involved. It will baste itself as the butter melts. We're going to lift the turkey, remove all of the soiled um, pads and put the clean aluminum foil covered roasting pan down. Make sure that you rub down the wings and the legs. The wings are often the first thing to burn, so we're going to insulate them and give them a little coat 
two layers of aluminum foil and the tips of the wings, one of the thinnest part of the bird, would burn very quickly before the breast, the thicker parts, were done. So we're going to give them a little insulation, just kind of tuck them in. We're going to cover the entire breast section with one sheet of aluminum foil. This will bake for just a little while and then we will remove it and brown our turkey a little. Our turkey is 20.29 uh, 20 pounds, so right at 21 pounds, and we know that we need to bake that for about three and a half to four hours. The Butterball Turkey website will show you exactly what you need to do. So we have 21 pounds, no stuffing inside our turkey, three and a half to four hours. The first time that our turkey comes out of the oven, we have the foil on top. We're going to see that it is browned everywhere. The foil was not covering. We will then remove the foil to reveal the breasts that are completely cooked, but still a little lighter color than we'd like. The wings will remain covered until the end of cooking. We're going to simply put the oven on broil and set the timer for five minutes to brown this top section and give it that beautiful Rockwell painting um, golden brown look that we're after. You can see the legs and the thighs have already browned and they're that beautiful deep color. While your turkey is broiling on the timed broil, you do need to stay close to the oven to um, prevent any getting distracted or burning. Here the turkey is out of the oven from its final cook. You can see the herbs and spices just under the skin and the skin is beautiful golden brown. The wings are completely done and not overcooked or burnt in any way, which is kind of important. We don't want to have anything burnt. You can see the herbs and the spices, the little bits under the skin. Your turkey is delicious and ready to enjoy.